Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Common Sense, our monthly show here on uh, Cable Channel 17, sponsored by Ohio Valley Bank, where we discuss current topics as they relate to the uh, businesses in the area and the banking industry. And today, we are joined by Tony Staley. Uh, Tony is a product development and business sales and support with Ohio Valley Bank. And you may recognize Tony. He's been with us here before on the show. And he's back again to share some uh, banking industry trends and innovations that have changed a little bit maybe since the last time. So welcome, Tony. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right. Uh, maybe you could start out by telling us a little bit about, you know, what your role is at the bank and how long you've been there and a little bit of the history of how you've come to be where you're at today. Sure. I've been at the bank for, it'll be 14 years in January. I started at the bank as a bank teller, had a short-lived career as a bank teller, and then I moved into marketing. I uh, spent quite a long time in marketing, uh, moved on to social media and web development, and then moved on to product development, which is part of what I do now. And what that is, is I look for new technologies, which is what we're going to talk about today, okay. and I hopefully bring them back into the bank and act as a project manager for that process, so try to get them up and running. Another part of what I do is business sales and support. So um, I don't normally go out to a new prospect and sell a checking account, mm -hmm. uh, but our customers that are already checking account holders, we have a lot of ancillary products that we sell like uh, credit and debit card processing, uh, internet banking, uh, direct deposit for payroll and things like that. I sell those to our customers and then if they have any issues or needs after the sale, I support them as well. Okay, interesting. Banking has really changed a lot over the last 10 years. Absolutely. It's, it's really kind of going into that new new age in technology, and it's obviously your job to keep up with that for the bank. And, you know, you've been out traveling here lately trying to keep up with some of that, learning some new information. Want to share some of those different things that, sure. that you've been doing? I actually got back last Friday. I went to San Jose, California, and uh, it was a beautiful area, and uh, was at a conference called Finnovate. And what Finnovate is, it's a financial innovation conference. Uh, it's been going on for about 10 years. They have four Finnovates uh, each year. They have the Finnovate uh, Spring, which is in San Jose, California. They have Finnovate Fall, which is in New York City. They have a Finnovate in London and a Finnovate in Beijing. So uh, I don't <coughs> attend London or Beijing. I have attended <laughs> New York, but I usually attend uh, Spring in San Jose. So what they do is they look at new financial technologies. So they're looking at startups, mm -hmm. uh, people that are trying to create new partnerships for themselves, people that are trying to find funding uh, for their projects. And it's basically demos for two days. Oh, wow. And what it is is they have one demo for seven minutes. If you like it, you've got seven minutes to figure that out. If you don't like it, you only have seven minutes to sit through it. And then uh, as soon as the one's over, the next one starts, and they do that for about an hour or two, and then they have networking sessions in between so that if I'm interested in something, I can go talk to that provider. I have time to talk to them and see the more nuts and bolts of what mm -hmm. they're doing. Okay. So it's, you know, obviously with the way technology is advancing, that's a good reason to have four of them per year because sure. just one a year really gets things behind in, in product development and and new technology. Yeah, and also, you know, the, the spring and the fall, San Jose, New York, they have some similarities. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to see a ton of big jumps between those two, but the Beijing and the London, they have a lot of different needs right. than what we have in the United States. The banking system in those places is very different from what we have here. We have a lot of smaller banks. We have our big national banks as well. Right. But especially in London, they don't have a lot of community banks like we do. They have large, big banks, uh, just a few of them. So a lot of different kinds of needs for right. those places. Absolutely. What was uh, maybe one of the biggest things that you saw at that event that was really brought to your attention that's, that's coming in the future? Well, you know, the most common thing that I saw was definitely advances in mortgage lending. Uh, ways to take technology and speed up the process, uh, create efficiencies, create a better user experience for the applicant. Um, that was definitely the overarching theme. Uh, the vast majority, not the majority, but the highest percentage of any block was the mortgage lending block. So I would say the 
if you can look at Finovate as this is kind of what's coming down the pipe, I think we might be seeing some advances in mortgage lending. Okay. So really looking at trying to reduce that time that it takes from application through all the paperwork process. Anybody that's ever purchased property or home through a mortgage, you know it takes some time. Yeah. And this is an effort to kind of streamline that process. and. and Absolutely, and also to make it easier for the customer. Not just faster, but easier. But easier. Uh, you know, use that technology to create a better way of sharing documents that you might need to show you know, proof of income and things like that. Right. Uh, you know, upload those from your phone. Take a picture and send it to the lender. Things like that right. in a secure manner rather than just sending a picture over text right. message. Because a lot of times, if, you know, if you've been through the process, it's almost like a scavenger hunt sometimes to collect all this documentation. Yes. And if we can do that efficiently electronically, accurately from secure sources. It would a absolutely great help. Great. Um, any things you saw that are exciting that, you know, in, in the future? Obviously the, the mortgage thing, but sure. some other things that you'd like to share? One thing that I'm pretty excited about is machine learning and AI. Um, and, you know, for some people that might be watching that don't know what those are, that is basically teaching a computer system to teach itself how to do something without actually programming it to do that thing. <laughs> and I gave an example earlier today, um, and this is very layman's terms because it's not my field either. Okay, and AI but, is artificial intelligence. Right, artificial intelligence. Okay. So if you have a robot and you teach the robot to jump and you tell it to go across a room, but the room, the floor has holes periodically. Mm -hmm. You don't teach it go this far and then jump to get over the hole, you just teach it, you can jump and falling down is bad, go here. And it can teach itself through trial and error to jump over the holes. So that's machine learning. And I'm excited about what we might be able to do with that because we can take the ability for these systems to teach themselves to do a lot of different things. We can use it to enhance our fraud detection. We can teach our systems without saying this particular transaction is fraud, we can say, of all these transactions, these kinds tend to be fraud, so then it can learn that's fraud. Right. Um, and we can do enhanced biometric security. Uh, one of the new biometric security functions is to look at the uh, veins in the eye. Uh, you okay. know, not your pupil, <laughs> or, but right. the veins. And you can use AI machine learning to adapt that, you know, because people change over time. You know, uh, people's eyes aren't always the exact exactly. same. Uh, so you can create a better experience for that and you can use that to log into your mobile banking account. We can also use this machine learning. This is what I'm kind of excited, uh, really excited about. We don't do it currently, but I think it's really cool is we can create a better support system for our customers. We can create what's you know, called a chat bot. You've probably heard of those. Mm -hmm. um, a customer <coughs> may not want to talk to us on the phone. They may not want to come in. They may want to go into a chat system. Well, we can have a chatbot learn to speak normal English to our customers to help them with their issues while still seeming, not, we're not trying to fool anybody, right. but while still seeming like there might be a person on the other end of that line. Oh, wow. Those are some, some interesting things. I mean, it, it takes me back to some of the things that, you know, we once saw in movies, mm -hmm. you know, where, where you would, the actor would go up to the, the machine and look into the, the camera and they would scan their eye or they would scan different parts of their body and give them access. So those things are probably more closer than we think they are to practical application uh, those in are everyday here. life. <laughs> they're here, right. Oh, yeah. But you... they're close to application. Yes. So we're going to be seeing those. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So, you know, well, you mentioned, you know, some of the communication ways about the artificial intelligence learning to communicate. Um, and that's one of the things that, with that, you know, we do the phone, the online, the ATM, and the tellers um, at the branches. And, and we, there might be some options for changing, but you think those things are going to change completely, or are we still going to kind of operate in that realm of where we're at today? I think we're going to have those things, of course. I think the change that you're going to see is, right now, we provide the means for you to contact us. And when I say we, I mean most businesses. You, know, mm -hmm. you can call us, you can email us, you can do all these things, um, but we still limit it to some extent. There are some forms of communication that maybe we don't have. Right. Um, I think what's going to change is we're going to take whatever communication you want to use. If you want to text us, we'll text you. 
and we'll conduct that business over text. Right. If you want to tweet at us, we will tweet you and we'll conduct that information. Now, we're probably going to take it offline because we don't want it to be public. <laughs> right. But I think that's the biggest change in communication is that we're going to just start accepting whatever you want to do and we're going to communicate with you in the medium that you want to communicate mm -hmm. in regardless of maybe whether or not it's the most efficient for us. Right. Because, you know, as far as, you know, customer service goes, there's always the great value of having that face-to-face -face discussion yes. with individuals. And obviously when somebody's upset, that's how customer service gets resolved typically is a face-to-face -face visit. So, so that's good. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, we, we have chat and uh, sometimes people will use that. And I think it just depends on the person, mm -hmm. uh, what mode of communication they're the most comfortable with, right. uh, whether or not they might really want to have that face-to-face -face might depend on whether or not some of that is something that they should have known about, you right. know, something like that. The, well, we, we get it in all forms. Right, and, and a lot of it, as we discussed at lunch, is is generational. Mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. different generations are more comfortable with different modes of communication than others. Sure. So we have to address them all. Uh, uh, yes. Because that's the way business changes. Definitely. So, good. Uh, any interesting things coming out involving social media that you've seen? There were some interesting things on social media. Um, there were a couple of them. One of them uh, was a company is using social media to rank people's sphere of influence. And I've seen this for a while. Like I said earlier, I did social media for Ohio Valley Bank for a while. And there was a website called Clout with a K okay. um, back then. And it would rank your social media influence. So how influential am I in my social media circles? But this, what they're doing is they're not limiting it to social media. They're using social media. They're looking at your social media profiles, mm -hmm. um, your friends, your how many friends you have, the type of friends you have, things, how often you post. But they're trying to gauge your actual real world influence. And they say, you know, the most influential people are the ones that you should be targeting with promotions. Uh, and when I say promotions, I, I don't mean like a, a job promotion, but, you know, a, a marketing promotion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, new technology rollouts, beta people, things like that, because those are the ones that are going to influence the people around them. So that was uh, one use of social media I okay. saw. Another one that's a little out there to me is um, using social media to decision loans. Ooh. And <laughs> what they were going to look at was they, the claim of the company, and of course it was a seven minute demo, so I can't. Right tell whether it's true or not, but they claimed that they could look at your social media profile. And I should point out, they're not looking at your social media profile individually. They're looking at as many social media profiles they can get. So they've mm -hmm. got millions to billions <coughs> of pieces of information. They're compiling all that information uh, using their analytics software algorithms to look through it, sift through it. And they can say, we can tell someone's likelihood to repay a loan based off of their social media profile. Oh, wow. So I'm not sure, they said it was compliant. I'm not sure about the compliance. It's not my role, but the first thing I thought was that seems a little odd, but it's something that someone is thinking about. And I think that's a kind of a key to what I see at Finnovate. Mm -hmm. It might not always necessarily be the biggest thing that's gonna be the next thing to rock our world, right. but it's what the people that want to make the next big thing think is maybe the next big thing. Well, it's interesting. You know, it's it's when we look at new development, and new ideas, and the next big thing. You know, obviously there are things all over the spectrum that you know are ideas that companies and people use to come up with, and you know, sifting through those and finding out what really works and what's going to stick, and what people embrace. That's that's the goal. Yep. That's the that's the goal of new new product development. So, do you? Do you see the big technology companies, maybe such as Apple and Amazon, you know, some companies that we see a lot in the news, ones that are really growing, are they taking a, a role in some of this financial innovation? They are. Uh, neither Apple nor Amazon actually presented at Finnovate, but both of them had an appearance. Right. Uh, other companies were using their products. Okay. Um, Siri made an appearance on stage a couple of times. Uh, Amazon's... Uh, voice service, I won't say it, so people don't start uh, doing things, <laughs> but um, Amazon's made an appearance on stage. So 
and one of the other keys was non-tactile interface. So, you know, we're used to touching. We're used to typing on a keyboard. We're used to right. touching our phones. Um, but voice recognition was uh, one of the keys of Finovate. And like I said, the biometric, uh, the mm -hmm. eye and facial recognition right. were there. So those are definitely ways that people can interact with their financial services without necessarily touching. But Apple did have four people in attendance at Finovate. And I didn't see any Amazon people, but Apple did have a presence there. They were probably there, they just weren't. They may have. They may have just not put it <laughs> on their profile. They may just not, that's right, right, exactly. So was there something, I mean, you've been around this realm for several years now and kind of working in this field. Was there anything you thought you might see more of, but really didn't have a presence there? I, I did, or I did not see it, um, and it was blockchain. Um, I'd, two years ago, mm -hmm. Bitcoin was everywhere. It was right. huge. It was the new hotness. <laughs> uh, this year, blockchain was n not, not mentioned once, uh, and I was very surprised. Uh, I thought for sure that it would still be going. Now, I'm not surprised Bitcoin wasn't mentioned mm -hmm. because Bitcoin has kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, there are some companies that have gotten out of the Bitcoin business and taken it more into blockchain, Okay, but there was not any blockchain mentioned at all. All right. Well, and to, to show you my knowledge of, the, of that, what is blockchain? I've uh, never, yeah. heard, of, I've never sure. heard of that. So have you heard of Bitcoin? I've heard of Bitcoin. Okay. So um, both of them, they're, they're similar and different. Okay. Uh, blockchain is basically a, a ledger on the internet that uses different computers uh, called blocks or okay. nodes, people call them, mm -hmm. to keep, keep, compile information, okay. right? So uh, we'll use uh, money transfer, for example. If I want to give you a dollar, uh, I could use blockchain to send you that dollar. And what happens is on the node, it writes down, it, it verifies, Tony has a dollar. He's sending the account to you. Mm -hmm. Now you have a dollar. And all, all, thousands upon thousands of nodes are keeping this information. So I could maybe change my node and say, well, Tony actually has $5. Okay. But all these thousands of other computers say, no, Tony has $1. So right. that kind of keeps it honest. Okay. But it's a, it's a permanent ledger based off of computers on the Internet that maintains what's happening, when it happens, and where it goes. And it validates itself with each other. Oh, wow. So that's, that's what blockchain is. Bitcoin was a, a non-standard currency mm -hmm. uh, that was basically decentralized. It had no um, centralized authority on it. So it wasn't United States dollars. It wasn't any kind of um, foreign currency. It was Bitcoin. Uh, the problem with Bitcoin was it still had to have a value so I might have a Bitcoin, and that Bitcoin might have been worth, I'll just, $10. Mm -hmm. So I might go to the store that accepted Bitcoin, which is rare, uh, and say, well, I want $10 worth of apples. Here's my, bit. I transfer my Bitcoin. Right. But you had to use a wallet, a, a mobile wallet, mm -hmm. to store your Bitcoin. And some people were like, well, they used that old mentality of, I got to store my Bitcoin. So they had Bitcoin repositories. Well, some of those started going south a little bit. So that's, I think that's why Bitcoin has fallen out of favor, plus the fact that it fluctuates. Right. Blockchain is actually transferring like United States dollars. It's not trying to create this non-centralized currency. currency. Right. Okay. Well, good. Interesting. And, and blockchain could also be used for other things like shipping, you know, cargo. It can be used for many, many things, but you know, the made sense to use the transaction for us. Okay. And, you know, all the way out there in uh, California, you saw some Ohio presence that was out there? I did. I actually, uh, I got there and they had a, a flyer in our materials that was Ohio Jobs or Jobs Ohio. Jobs Ohio, yes. And um, there's a, a fintech accelerator in Ohio. So I was really surprised and pleased that this group was at uh, Finnovate, first of all. They did have a, a booth set up. 
and uh, they were just looking for people to participate in what they're doing and they were just promoting Ohio as you know it's a good spot it's centralized a uh, lot of funds for startups and mentors at top financial mm -hmm. institutions and I thought it was really cool I went and talked to them and I was I was really pleased with, that they were there and had a presence. Right. Well, our, our state of Ohio is working for us and keeping us out there so Absolutely. That's, that's a good thing. So with all this different stuff that's going on and, and the new technology within the banking industry, um, OVB has something new that they've introduced lately. Would you like to share a little bit about that to we, us, to our viewers? Sure, we do. We actually uh, recently unveiled a an auto shopping on our website. Okay. Uh, and our customers or anyone could go to our website, ovbc.com, and they can search for a car. They can put the make, the model, the year, you know, their price range, uh, the mileage, and they can plug all that in and it will bring up results that are localized. We have it set for uh, more local because that's kind of our mantra, uh, stay local. And they can click on the car, they can compare cars with each other so they can see the different features of the different cars. And they can actually go to the individual car and see you know, the features for that specific car. Mm -hmm. They can look at reviews on the car. They can put a request for information for that car and that request will go to the dealer. Uh, they also have the ability to click on a link and talk to one of our loan specialists in that area and they can even apply online for an auto loan through our online loan application. Okay. So it's really kind of automating the process of, of purchasing a vehicle. Uh, a lot of dealers participate in this program. Is that how it works, like it's a nationwide sure. type of a program? Yeah, and what it is, it's pulling from these nationwide networks of dealers. You know, a dealer okay. might post their vehicle on online, and what they're doing is they're adding it to a network, and it's going to mm -hmm. all these different sites, and we're plugged into those networks. So any dealer that's doing that, trying to sell those cars online, is going to be plugged into what we're doing okay. as well. So are these uh, new and used vehicles? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know I just happened to be on the website the other day and just happened to cross that tab at the top, and I thought, what is this? And I clicked on it and, and started looking through, and I said, just a wide, wide selection of sure, possibilities I, on there. I think it really gives a benefit to our customer because, you know, they have the ability they can go to a trusted site right. and they can look at cars they can look without the hassle maybe that they might find mm -hmm. uh, at other places uh, they can look and be sure that you know we're not going to inundate them with pop-up ads and things right. of that nature and they can also get information for a loan right from the website when they're looking they know the information of the car and they have that available to them when they talk to a lender great it's a great opportunity it streamlines that process mm -hmm. just like you know, some people now do their holiday shopping just from home. You can sure. <laughs> pretty much do your, your vehicle shopping from home as well. So that's good. Um, just a couple other things. I know Gabe Stewart was here a couple months ago, and he talked about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. What, anything new uh, maybe that you picked up recently about cybersecurity? I know it's a hot, hot topic in, in sure. everything we do now. We always got to be careful. I'll just get that disclaimer out of the way so Gabe doesn't smack me on the back of the head when I get back to the <laughs> bank. But um, one of the things I saw at Finnovate, which was really interesting, was uh, not necessarily on the consumer side, but on our back end side, a way of measuring the accuracy of whether someone is who they are when they call into our call center. Now, of course, it's got to get a baseline, but it actually had a graph, and we saw a demo, and as the person spoke, it, got, it went up to 98, 97% confident that this was the person that he was. And then he handed the phone to his partner, and it plummeted right down to the bottom. That's like three. It's like, nope, that's not who it is. So, you know, like I said, we got to get a baseline at some point, but right. as we get that, we can have a confidence that, yes, that is our customer. Of course, we would still validate them, you know, with the normal security questions, but just it would help it would be very helpful wow that's interesting <laughs> uh, and one other thing you know we, we hear about so many people now using smartphones and their, the wallet in their phone whatever that you know virtual wallet I mm -hmm. guess it is um, what's your outlook on you know when we're moving through all this system to this virtual money is cash going to ever go away Ever? Ever? <laughs> Ever's a long time. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say no, not ever, because, you know, when we're in the Star Trek world, maybe. Maybe. But uh, not anytime soon, not in my lifetime. Uh, cash and checks are still here to stay. 
I, I don't see that shifting. Now, of course, it's going to go. It's going to get less and less. Right. But there's still certainly a place for cash and checks and all the traditional forms of payments. Okay, so don't go to the backyard, dig up the mason jars, and go put them in the bank right away. We're still safe. Oh, we can keep them in the bank. Okay. We're safer there. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that's great. Well, um, Tony, we're out of time for today's program, but we really appreciated you coming back today and, and sharing the new information that you've gotten uh, from uh, you know your travels throughout the, the country and learning about these new technologies in the banking industry. and. We'd love to have you come back again maybe next year and update us again on what's it's new. My pleasure. I'd love it to. It currently changes. So, But until next time, this is Brad Bapst with Common Sense, and we will see you again.